Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting equation. We have sine x minus i cosine x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x. I'm not exactly sure if I did this problem before. If I did, I apologize. But I'll be presenting three methods. Hopefully, that'll make up for that. So let's start with the first method. So let's remember Euler's formula. And it says cosine theta plus i sine theta equals e to the power i theta, right? Now, the question, the million dollar question is, what is my theta, right? When you look at an equation like this, you don't have a cosine, you don't have a sine, or they're switched around. So here's what we need to do. Two things. Cosine turned into sine in my equation, and sine turned into negative cosine. You see what I'm saying? They switched around and also one of them changed the uh, sign, the S-I-G-N sign. So now, how can we achieve this? So we basically need to do two things. One is the name change. And anytime there is a name change from sine to cosine or cosine to sine, P over P, pi I mean, pi over two or three pi over two is involved. One of them, okay? You 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 can tell which one, and the second thing is cosine is positive and sine is negative. Why am I saying cosine is positive? Because cosine turns into a positive sine, so it's considered a positive cosine, and sine turns into a negative cosine, so sine is supposed to be negative in that quadrant. What is the quadrant? It is the fourth quadrant because that's where this is achieved, right? Cosine is positive and sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. Great. So we need to do something that sends an acute angle from the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant. So my theta is x plus 3 pi over 2. Because pi over 2 is not going to do it, and subtracting is not going to do it, I have to add 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2 radians to push it to the fourth. Think about it. Suppose you had 45 degrees at 270, you're going to be at 315 which is in the fourth quadrant. Make sense? I hope it does. Therefore, we're going to write our equation cosine theta plus i sine theta as cosine x plus 3 pi over 2 plus i sine x plus 3 pi over 2 because that's my theta, right? And this turns into the following because x plus 3 pi over 2 is going to be in the fourth quadrant. The name is going to change and cosine is positive on that quadrant so it's going to be sine x. And this one, the name is going to change to cosine, but sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. Therefore, this is just going to be cosine. Make sense? Okay. So that's what we got. And how is that helpful, though? Well, here's what we need to focus on. Not this one, because this is what we already had. But let's focus on this. So now I can go ahead and write it as e to the power i theta. Remember this part. So this is going to become e to the power i theta, which is x plus 3 pi over 2. And this is equal to 1, because that was given as such, right? But let's replace 1 with something complex. Let's complexify it. Okay. E, we can write it as e to the power 2 pi n i, where n is an integer, right? Great. So multiples of 2 pi is going to cut it. Now when we set uh, i times x plus 3 pi over 2, to 2 pi and i, i is going to cancel out, and then we're going to end up with something like this. But remember, our goal is to solve for x. So let's isolate x from here. x is basically going to be 2 pi n minus 3 pi over 2. And then we can kind of write it as 4n minus 3 multiplied by pi over 2. So, so something like this. There's a couple different ways to write it, which you'll see in a little bit. But from here, I can kind of find some initial values. For example, if n is equal to 0, I get a negative value. I don't like that. Let's use n equals 1. That's going to give us x equals pi over 2. Awesome. And if n is equal to 2, then we're going to be getting x equals 5 pi over 2. Awesome. They're 2 pi apart. Nice. But wait a minute. These are just particular solutions. This is the general solution, right? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and then hopefully we'll be able to compare our results. Okay? Second method, sine x minus i cosine x equals 1. 
I'm going to write the right hand side. I know most of you thought about this method. I'm going to write 1 as 1 plus 0i. This is the standard form or the rectangular form. And now we can compare the real parts. So sine x must be 1 and cosine x must be 0. What does that tell you? That means x is pi over 2 or 90 degrees, right? Wait a minute, pi over 2 is not the only solution though, right? Because you can add multiples of 2 pi, so plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, is going to do it. But wait a minute, we got a 4 and something something. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator here and write something similar. It's going to look like this, 4k plus 1 times pi over 2. Well, are they the same? Yes, they are. You know why? This is kind of like 1 mod 4. This is also 1 mod 4 if you think about it. You could avoid that problem by changing this, uh, just adding 2 pi to both sides here at this point, which I didn't do because I, I saved it for the second method, obviously. Then you would get the exact same thing. So it is the same thing. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. And some of these methods, actually, I learned from you guys. So thank you very much for your beautiful comments. Keep up the good work. So now, the, for the third method, we're going to go ahead and write our original equation. Sometimes you just need an inspiration, right? And writing the equation, the original problem, actually helps trigger that. Okay, so what is the third method? It is multiplying both sides by i. And there's a good reason behind it. When you multiply by i, you're giving it a 90 degree rotation. It is counter counterclockwise. That's how you say it, CCW. So what it does is switches the sine and cosine because when you, like, let's say you have a triangle like this and you kind of turn this thing uh, 90 degrees in any direction pretty much, right? Then what happens is these two are going to be switched around. But what happens is the x value here becomes the y value and the y value becomes the x value, but now this x value, which was the y value before, becomes negative. You see what I'm talking about? So it changes the sign as well. It's a beautiful thing to do. Let's go ahead and do it. Multiply both sides by i, and yay. That's going to do it. So now we get i sine x minus i squared cosine x equals i. Now i squared is negative 1, so this is going to be i sine x plus cosine x or cosine x plus i sine x equals i. And then as you know, this is e to the power i x and i can be written as e to the power i pi over 2. From here, x should be pi over 2, but don't forget to add multiples of 2 pi and you are all set. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye bye.